Hello. Mr. President. Hi, Henry. How are you? Okay. Fine. Well, that was an interesting <laughs> evening. Well, he's a fascinating man. Yeah. And it was interesting for all those other people to hear these, you know, hearing talk and so forth. And uh, really hope somebody will make a mental note of the whole thing. Yeah. I, yeah. I thought he was more fascinating in the afternoon than he was in the evening. But the evening yeah. Yeah, of course, the, our afternoon session was more profound, actually. Evening. He said a very interesting... was a little bit uh, too heavy on economics, because I'm absolutely convinced... Yeah, I know, I know. That's that But that's the kick. That's the kick that all the libs are on, you know. Well, that they, so we can... But we can we can tell them we're willing, but they aren't going to... They don't want that. President, I don't even think we should tell them they're willing. Oh, no, no, no. We can tell the libs we're willing, but we're not going to tell Mao that. Hell no, because he ain't going to ask. Right, and I don't, th I don't think he's going to ask through a second uh, liner either. He's going to ask through a fourth liner. Right. The reason he wants to see you is because you're the only yeah. girl figure right now. Incidentally, he said a very interesting thing at the end of the evening as I was at the car, and I want you to get the translator to see if he can recall it. Give it to you. He probably can. He didn't write it, but he, he said. He, uh, before he got into the car, he said, I am not General de Gaulle. But he says, if I were General de Gaulle, I believe I would say that works to this effect that your trip can change the whole future of the world. I, I wish you well. I completely agree with you. It was a very, I don't know whether I, I didn't get it. He said something in more detail than that, but that was the, the sense of it. But if you could be sure the translator sees it, he can try to remember that part. Because that was I the most significant thing he said. Right. I thought that was a very nice touch, wasn't it, though? Absolutely. See, I think he was. I think he was kind of moved by the evening himself too, you know, and, and the afternoon. Well, particularly, he they told me that he was tremendously moved by your talk. Oh, afternoon. did he? Oh, yeah. Good. And, uh, see, I think the difference between the Moscow and the Peking summit is the difference he described between Nehru and Mao. Oh, wasn't that brilliant? It's a deadly. I was leading him on there because I'd read his stuff on Nehru, and he re described Nehru as a rather cynical politician. You know. That's right. In, in Moscow, we'll do policy, uh, policy yeah, and that will be very successful on that level. Yeah. But in speaking, we can make history. Right. If we hit the right point. I felt it was important to give him, though, a little feeling of. I was trying to do that. That we too have sort of a sense of the mystery and the mystique, you know. The whole feeling of, you know, of the, very the, you know, of, uh, that after all, maybe none of the modern American leaders, but a Lincoln had that feeling, and people thought he had. That that was very because, you see, uh, the French are greatly moved by mystique. Don't you agree? Absolutely. And so are the, uh, as a matter of fact, so are the Chinese. Are they really? Oh, yeah. You know, when I left speaking on my first trip, I was taken to the airport by the marshal who's now number three now. Yeah. And he said, uh, as we were driving into the airport, he said, you know, when I joined Mao, I had heard of a teacher who was in the mountains. You have to remember, Mao is not a military man. Yeah, he's like a teacher. Yeah. And we never thought we were doing anything for this generation, but for, for many generations in the future. And he said, if yet here you are, and here we are. Yeah. And that's the attitude of the president. To them, this is a tremendous thing that the president is coming to. I think it is. And we've got to play it that way with great, great uh, dignity and no uh, abrasiveness, but uh, great confidence. With, with, with strength, uh, but with a sense of the, of the world that, that has to be built. This is one of the things I really don't think that, that all of our, you know, deference to the fellows like our like Agnew or, or even Connolly could handle this. I think this is one thing. What one of well, it isn't that I understand it, but it's and it isn't my experience, but I I think I'm I once said to when I lived in the West and went to school with Chinese, I'm a I'm I'm a little more Chinese than many Americans. Well, it's really true, you know. Well it's important though that one has that one one those big goals. Because they, they have dealt with tragedies. Too. They have dealt with uh, tragedies. Well, and the other thing, too, is that 
Boy, I'm telling you, you ought to feel pretty good about this day. After all your damn suffering, those son of a bitch and trips, why, you and I know something that none of those other fellows knew. That's right. Keep it close to it. Yeah, well, but he didn't say it quite that way. He said it better, but that was the, I think, what, and if you get the translator, if he will give you what, and see if I can have it, because I think he was trying to say something. Uh, we'll never see him again. He won't live much longer. No, I thought, and I think he is. Oh God, he is. You know, he he, he gets he gets hung up on the economic thing. But but on the other hand, wasn't interesting where he said Senator Kennedy said that and he misinterpreted it. It was a social luncheon. And, yeah, and then he said it was a social luncheon, and I was simply saying that that uh, looking at the situation. Well, this is the poorest country, most populous, and this is the richest country, so this is the natural way they should get together. Looking to the future, that may happen, but it ain't going to happen on this trip. The reason they are doing this is because they're the most threatened country in the world. They're scared to death. Dealing with the, uh, uh, with the most powerful. And you know, the one question we didn't really get an answer from him is why he believes the Chinese wanted this. Oh, he thinks it's because they are in a phase of capital construction and because they think they can get it only from us. I know, and I think that's wrong. Totally wrong. They're doing it for... See, that's, he's, that's the typical attitude of basically a Marxist. That's right. But they not the... One, because they feel threatened. Second, because they do want to solidify their rule and get themselves numbers legitimately and only well, you can do that. And he hit that point that they, he had, when he made the three points that Mao wanted to have before he died, that China must be united, of course, that's mm -hmm. Taiwan. Second, that, uh, the second point, that uh, China should be a great nation respected, and third, economic progress, I guess. Yeah, well, that's good. I think they were going to do it, you know, maybe a little maybe further down the road, but that's relatively the easiest part. We will, you can be sure, we won't raise it. No, that's up to them. And, no, they won't raise it. There's no maybe, uh, maybe in the second or third round. But I do believe that we can, that this can go down and agree that it's better to that. Don't you think having him over was a good idea? And I all think it was a good idea. Because, uh, it's good to have Smith there. He's not going. He's going to Moscow, but not here. And uh, he's a nice man, isn't he? Smith. Gentle guy, very kind. Right. Well, get a good sleep. You deserve it.